Coming up, we look at everything you need to know about the solar system for your GCSE physics exams. We look at easy methods for remembering information about the planets. We look at natural and artificial satellites, as well as the Milky Way and how the Sun was formed. At the end of the video, there'll be a short knowledge test to see how much you know. So this video covers everything you need to know about the solar system and by the end of the video you should be able to list the bodies that make up the solar system and describe our solar system as part of a galaxy. You should also be able to explain how stars are formed. Let's jump straight in. The solar system contains the sun, the eight planets, dwarf planets as well as natural satellites. The first thing that we need to be able to do is to remember the order of the eight planets going from the Sun. First off, we start with the four smaller rocky planets. Closest to the Sun is Mercury, then Venus, then Earth, and Mars. We then have a ring of asteroids before we reach the larger gaseous planet of Jupiter, which is the biggest planet in our solar system. We then get the ring planet of Saturn, Uranus and then finally Neptune. In the past Pluto would have been classed as a planet but it was downgraded to a dwarf planet in 2006 due to its small mass as well as its location in space. So there we have the eight planets in order. To help you to remember the order of the eight planets, we can use a mnemonic. Here is quite a simple one. So first we take the first letter of each of the planets. So we've got Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. And we use a mnemonic such as, my very excellent mother just served up noodles. If we then draw a dotted line between Mars and Jupiter, that will remind us that this is where the asteroid belt is found. Let's now look at natural satellites. A simple definition of a satellite is a body that orbits another body in space. Well, an obvious large natural satellite that we see most nights is the moon. The moon is actually the fifth largest natural satellite in our solar system and it orbits the Earth at a speed of around one kilometer per second. Larger planets such as Jupiter and Saturn have many moons. Here we can see Io, which is the most volcanically active body in the solar system, as well as Europa, which is likely to be the best place to look for environments that could support life. Both of these are moons of the planet Jupiter. We then have artificial satellites, which are manufactured and launched into space from Earth by rocket. So to summarize, a natural satellite is a body that orbits around another body in space and is formed by natural processes, such as planets which orbit the Sun and moons which then orbit the planets. But then we have artificial satellites which are manufactured and launched into space. I'll produce another video all about artificial satellites and their orbits. So what is the Milky Way? Well, our solar system appears large to us, but it's actually only a tiny part of our galaxy which is called the Milky Way. The Milky Way is a spiral galaxy of over a billion stars. Our solar system is situated in one of the spiral arms of the Milky Way and as we look into the night sky we can look up and we can actually see the densest part of our galaxy. There are billions of galaxies in our universe. You also need to know about the formation of the Sun. Like all stars, the Sun was formed when the dust and gas clouds, called nebula, get pulled together by the force of gravitational attraction. The size of a star depends on the mass of the dust and gas that is in the nebula when the star starts to form. Very heavy nebulae, 
results in the formation of very heavy stars. Our Sun is actually considered to be a fairly average star, of fairly average mass and fairly average brightness. This is because it was likely formed from a small nebula. So what are our key learning points about the formation of the Sun? Well the first thing that we need to know is the Sun was formed when nebula was pulled together by gravitational attraction. We also need to know that the mass of dust and gas in the nebula determines the size of the star. So if you have heavy stars, they would have been formed from heavy nebulae. Our Sun was formed from a small nebula. And so what this actually means is that it is of average mass and brightness. We now have a short multiple choice quiz testing how much knowledge you have gained from this video. You have several responses that you can choose from and 10 seconds. So question one, what is the name of the galaxy our solar system is found in? Is it A, the Milky Way, B, Andromeda, C, M33, or D, the Sunflower Galaxy? The correct answer is A, the Milky Way. Question number two, where is the asteroid belt found in our solar system? Is it A, between the Sun and Mercury? B, between Jupiter and Saturn? C, between Mars and Jupiter? The correct answer is C, between Mars and Jupiter. Question three, which of the following statements about the sun is incorrect? A, the sun is an average sized star. B, the sun is a very heavy star. Or C, the sun was formed from a small nebula. Or D, the sun has an average sized mass. So which of the statements is incorrect? The incorrect statement is B, the Sun is a very heavy star. Question 4. When placing the planets in order going from the Sun, which of the following is correct? A, B, C, The correct answer is A. Question number five. Which of the following best describes the reason for different masses of stars? Is it A, the position the star has within the galaxy, or B, the mass of the nebulae that the star has formed from? The correct answer is B. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, give it a like or subscribe. Have a great day.